Hi everybody. I'm going to show you today how to make this bird shaped uh, ewer. And this is what we called it uh, in the video that follows this that shows you how to put the handle on and, and get it all squared away to fire. So this is, to me, this looks like a bird shape and uh, it's actually a little vase of some kind or a ewer or a jug or a salsa server or something. So I'm gonna set it aside now and out of this, I have about two pounds of clay right here and I'm gonna throw the, the base part of this. I'll put him right over there. Okay, so let's see, got you right there on the, on the screen, so we're good. So about two pounds, just right at two pounds. Whoa. Got a little kind of a biscuit made here. When I cut a little bit away from the bottom like that, I make a little cut and I'm sort of sliding the, the throwing stick uh, right down the edge of that and then I hit the bat with it. But I don't try to peel it off right then. I take a little water and put in that little trough, slow my wheel down and do like so and the the clay comes right off and doesn't stick back to the pot generally <laughs> uh, so then i can sort of trim that off yes just to clean off some of the some of the finger markings and to also just clean off some of the slip and sludge and stuff. Very good. So I'm going to go down and with this end of it, I can sort of finish out the bottom, shape out the bottom of my, and then lean it over. And I'm taking a lot of slip and junk off the inside edges, so that's good.
So the idea is to have kind of a conical uh, vase and you want it to flare at the top. You want the bottom of it to be just a little bit heavier than you might make a mug or something because what you're going to do is fold these pieces over and you're going to have it kind of where it could rock a little bit if you're, if, you know, it needs to have balance and so that little bit of extra weight in the foot would be a good thing. Just make sure you get it dry and get it well compressed so that it doesn't crack and you'll be good. So let's see, this is just plain old brown stoneware. Actually it's buff color I think. or cardboard as some people call it. So here it is, it's not quite leather hard, it's very soft even, and I'm just gonna gently coax the sides together. And I'm not gonna do this too fast because then you'd probably crack it. Don't wanna crack the bird. So the idea is to have it come to a point, and I'm gonna choose this end for the point, and that's the tail, like right here, like this end, this end of it, the pointed end. And then the other end, you're gonna leave an opening. Like a pitcher kind of opening. You don't want those to meet. One of them is going to have to go under and one's gonna, one side will have to go over. So you still... One good thing about this clay being so wet is that it's going to stick pretty good without having to do a lot of scoring and slipping here. So I'm going to coax that under. And when you glaze that, if you don't want that, or if you do want that to be completely sealed, you can put a little bit of slip in there. Or when you glaze it, you can just make sure you put glaze there. But get it as closed as you can. And you want your sides to be pretty even. So... Let me straighten the camera up so you can sort of see how even that is, or not. <laughs> I'm going to stick it in there and just press up on the stick and press down on this. Actually, this is pretty perfect time to do this because I think this clay is very workable right now. Okay, so I have the shape that I want. So it's kind of like a bird uh, sitting on something or standing. because the clay is wet enough that it's gonna stick to itself here. But I want that edge to be pretty smooth. <clears throat> your size of your bird depends on the size of the little vase that you throw. So you can have a chubby bird a slender bird or big bird. Get my fingerprints off of here. And let's see, there it is. So make a spout. If you're going to use this for pouring something, 
you want it to have a nice pour. And so take your take your finger, get your finger wet, and you're just gonna do like that. This is where the water or whatever you're pouring is gonna come out. So what I'm doing on this spout is I'm making the the inside edge that let's assume you're going to put water in it. So if the water hits that smooth rounded edge and goes out to the thing you can do to help it not drip or not drip as badly is having this edge round and this edge sharp down here. So you can take care of some of that after this hardens up a little more, but I can get this part right here rounded while it's still pretty wet. And just let this part down here, I can take care of that with a sponge later. Let's see. It's interesting hydraulics and how things work and how this part of this is important if you're building a teapot. If you're making a spout, it's important. The same thing I'm doing here is very important for spouts, teapot spouts. That isn't perfect. I don't know what is. Okay. I think it's a bird. Ta-da. So now all it needs is a handle and it will be just like, it will be just like this one. This one on this one, you can see how the how the spout is too. So it's rounded on the top part and sharp down on the bottom. That really helps it pour well. So for me, I'm going to use one of these to put I to put water in my iron. <clears throat> and so pouring, you know, in that little bitty spot is going to help a lot. That's it. So now you can look at the part, uh, the other part of the video is it's in two pieces and you can look at that and see how the handle goes on. Okay, thanks for watching. Talk to you in the next video. Love you, bye-bye.